Hey everybody, and welcome to Niagara Wine Videos. I'm Brad, and I bring you the story behind Niagara's finest wines. And oh my gosh, we made it. Uh, 2012 is coming to an end. Today is December 31st. Uh, it was a crazy year, so much going on. Um, you know, we could talk about everything in the world, politics, religion, but thankfully, uh, we're here to talk about wine. <laughs> uh, and today, I'm going to release to you guys the 2012 pick, uh, Niagara Wine Videos, you know, the top red wine um, that we selected um, this year, the best wine that we tasted. Uh, just to be fair, uh, I went out and I tasted, um, I tasted the wines over again, some of the contenders. And although it was close, uh, this one really prevailed because of the QPR, the quality price ratio. When, uh, when I tell you the price of this wine um, and you taste this wine compared to um, you know, the other wines that were contending, it was contending against, it really is amazing that this wine uh, is only 30 bucks. So there you have it, $30. Um, the ones that it was competing against were 50, 80, 100. So um, this one here, I actually, I liked it. I liked it, I loved it. It's incredible. This is one of the most incredible wines. It comes from the 2010 vintage here in Niagara, which was dry, long, sunny, hot, perfect conditions uh, for red uh, wine varietals. So, um, I don't want to talk too much. Uh, I know you want to see the wine right here. Um, I do want to say uh, a couple things. Uh, I found this winery uh, by chance. So I was driving to get an oil change done, um, you know, in the summer in the town of Virgil. I was early, so I thought, yeah, maybe I'll just, you know, turn down, um, you know, one of the lines. I turned down line one. That's not a line I usually turn down. I went through a little residential area and bam, a winery was right there. I hadn't even heard of it. I hadn't seen it. I hadn't heard anything about it. I pulled the UE. I went in there. Um, and it, uh, I was astounded, first of all, the property is really neat, looks like a ranch. The inside tasting bar is absolutely gorgeous. Um, I was pleasantly greeted uh, by their uh, sommelier on staff. Um, his name is Daniel Kernahan, a uh, great, great uh, sommelier. Uh, he took me through a tasting of his premium reds and I was completely blown away. Um, so without further ado, here is the 2012 wine, red wine of the year. Picked by Niagara Wine Videos. It goes to, da 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 da, Pondview. Pondview Estate Winery. Uh, this is called their Bella Terra, and it is a Cabernet Franc, a 100% Cabernet Franc. It comes from the Four Mile Creek Appalachian, which is located in the town of Virgil, which is right before you get into Niagara on the Lake. This winery here, uh, Pondview, uh, is owned by an Italian family uh, from Sicily. Now, they came over here uh, in the 1970s and started growing grapes here in Niagara. And they have been grape growers for some of the most uh, prominent wineries here in the Niagara region, just growing grapes and selling their fruit to other wineries. So they've been growing grapes literally since the 1970s. It's all family owned, family farmed, family managed. Uh, and this wine here really reflects that. It's all hand crafted, uh, hand sorted, hand picked. These wines here is what I like to call handcrafted, terroir-driven wines. Um, so if you've been watching the last few shows, you'll, you'll quickly see um, that the, the best wines I picked for 2012 all have something in common. They're all family-owned operations, and they're all handcrafted wines. And when I say family-owned operations, they actually have an active hand in the business. It's not like they're phantom owners. They are actually involved in the business. They're there on a day-to-day -day basis making decisions. Their love, heart, you know, is in, is in the business, is into wine, into growing the grapes, into making these wines. So that makes a huge difference. Uh, handcrafted wines, that means it's, it's hand-cropped. You know, they're out in the vineyard on a day-to-day -day basis. When, they're, when, they, when they harvest it, it's all hand harvested. When they process it, it's all done by hand. So that is another thing that makes a big difference in my opinion. 
and the quality of the wine. So two things you should really look for uh, when you go out and look for wines. Family run and is it all is it a handcrafted wine? Third thing that's really important, although you know this one here, um, you know, some growers would have a difference of opinion. And next year, or yeah, 2013, it's our, <laughs> tomorrow, um, we're gonna get into that. We're gonna dive more into the growers, um, the area of things. And we're gonna see some really nice wines that come from growers, people that don't have a state fruit. Uh, but that is the third thing you should look for, uh, in my opinion, is a state. So it's, it's an estate vineyard. The, the wine comes from vineyards on their estate. I think that makes a difference unless it's done by a really reputable uh, grower that comes from a really, you know, uh, a prestigious or, or I guess, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, a really reputable vineyard. And it usually says that on the bottle. It'll either say the grower's name, like, you know, Lep Farms or Lep Vineyards, or it'll name the actual vineyard it comes from. So, you know, it has a really good track record of producing really good fruit. Uh, if it doesn't say that, then it could come from all over the place. Uh, and if it says estate, then you know that they have cared for it to the best of their ability. So you're getting something very high quality in the bottle. So, like I said, next year, 2013, we're gonna dive into that. Uh, we're gonna have some interviews with some really, you know, top class uh, grape growers here in the Niagara region, you know, and, and kind of get interviews with them, see what they're doing differently and see who's, they're selling, sorry, see who they're selling their grapes to, you know, what wines uh, that have, um, they've created out of them. And a lot of these wines have won awards. Um, but getting back to the Pond View, because it really is incredible. Uh, it's 100% Cabernet Franc. Uh, Cabernet Franc here in the Niagara region, I've been saying it over and over again. It's literally going to be our trademark wine, uh, Cabernet Franc. You know, California, Napa's got uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, Australia's got the Shiraz. Chile's got the Carmenere. Argentina's got the Malbec. I really think that Ontario, here in the Niagara region, it's going to be Cab Franc. No one's claimed it. And, uh, you know, after you've tasted these wines, I don't think you can get Cabernet Franc, single vineyard Cabernet Franc, uh, sorry, single varietal uh, Cabernet Franc, anywhere in the world that tastes like this. The only place that comes close, maybe a Chinon in the Loire Valley. And in my opinion, it doesn't come close. This is way better. The Cabernet Franc made here in Niagara is astounding. Um, so I'm going to uh, do a tasting with you guys. Uh, I'm going to be back. I'm going to do it right. We're going to let this open up for about an hour and then I'm going to come back. We'll do a full tasting so you can uh, you can see it and I'll describe it to you. Just give me another bottle shot there. It's a Pond View Estate Winery Bellaterra series. It's a VQA meaning all 100% Niagara grapes, uh, it's Four Mile Creek Appalachian, and it's 100% Cabernet Franc. Uh, it's 14.5 alcohol content, which is getting up there. Uh, but you know, most Bordeaux wines are from 13 to 15, so you know, it falls in the middle somewhere. Uh, and just a beautiful label there. It actually looks like a piece of leather, and yeah, that's really, really nice there. It's actually perforated, it comes out. So they've even put some, you know, quality and uh, touches on the bottle. Uh, really nice bottle of wine. Be right back. We'll do a tasting. Okay, guys, just uh, giving you another up-close shot of the bottle uh, because I realized uh, it was too far away last time. So hopefully you got a good shot of the label there. Um, I might add that uh, these Bellaterra series, they're, you know, premium uh, series wine. They have three. They have a 100% Cab uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, 100% Merlot, and a 100% Cabernet Franc. So even though all uh, three wines were really nice, I felt this one was actually showing the nicest right now. Now, 2010, obviously, you know, beautiful growing season for red varietals, especially for big red varietals like Cabernet Franc and Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, so, uh, you know, these tannins, as they dissipate over time, the wine will get softer, probably more enjoyable. However, I thought that this one was really enjoyable right now. So it's got that, that Houdini quality of being able to drink young and be able to drink when it's old, when it's aged. So to me, that's an incredible wine, one that you can enjoy now and you can enjoy later. Uh, and that is really why uh, I picked this wine as my favorite wine.
the Cabernet was really nice, but it, it still needed some time to come around, you know. It was just a little too harsh in my opinion. So a couple more years in bottle, uh, who knows, maybe that'll be the top pick of, um, you know, 2013. Uh, the Merlot, I, 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 it was delicious as well. And, you know, big tannin structure, just like this wine. Really big tannic structure, um, sorry, tannin structure which makes it a, a, a tad tannic, uh, but I like that. I really enjoy that. I like when it's tannic, when it's rich, and it's gripping, you know? Yeah, it's got incredible structure, but the tannins, you know, they're so aggressive right now. Uh, but like I said, this one here is still enjoyable, uh, young. So let's give it, uh, let's give a shot here uh, of the color. Let's do a little pour. I'm actually gonna pour it through the Venturi so that um, you know, I can aerate the wine and soften it up. It's already been open for about an hour, uh, but I still find the Venturi uh, on bigger red wines really softens it up and makes it, the flavors more recognizable and the wine more enjoyable to drink. So here we go, we'll just pour it through the Venturi and check out the color there. So a really dark, uh, dark, deep wine. And I have my biggest glass out <laughs> so I can, you know, really smell the wine and swish it around here. If you don't have a really big glass, definitely buy one and just use it for special, special wines. Uh, because something like this doesn't fit on a shelf or in the dishwasher, so you don't want to use it too much. So let's give it a swish there. Yeah, really nice, deep, dark black fruits. Uh, you know, you get blueberries. Really nice blueberries. Uh, you know, some black currant in there. You get vanilla. Some really nice... Um, almost e e eucalyptus notes uh, that you find in some Ch Chilean wines. Um, let's get the uh, phone call running, sorry. <laughs> It's a live show, so sometimes we're going to get interrupted. Um, yeah, some really nice uh, blueberry vanilla notes for sure. Um, you know, you get that creamy vanilla that comes out, uh, and that's from the French oak. Uh, this was aged in both French and American oak, um, and I usually find French oak gives you that nice creamy vanilla flavor. Um, and the American oak usually gives you woodsy notes like cedar, which you get in this. Yeah, you get some nice cedar notes, actually. So it's got both of that in here, which, you know, I just love in red wines. I love when I, I smell cedar, I smell, um, you know, blueberries, black cherries. I'd say this has got more blueberry than black cherry, but, uh, you know, really, really nice nose. Y you know, when you smell it, you're going to like it. It's delicious. It's got none of those off notes, those austere notes, none of that cheap wine smell, if you know what I mean. It's just, you know, delicious. Um... Mm, it's incredible, <laughs> really incredible. Uh, it smells soft on the nose, and this is a 2010 with big tannins, you know? So just against the wood there, you can see how dark it is. It's crazy dark. Um, you know, look at that. I mean, really dark wine. So let's give it a shot here. You know, I could just sit here for days and smell, but you know, I gotta taste the wine as well. <laughs> tannins in that wine. Incredible. You can't deny how well made this wine is and how nice the tannins are. Dry but not obnoxious or you know overbearing. You know really well put together. You see 2010 and it's drinking incredible right now. I know, I know it's going to age into you know a fine wine with you know and it's going to have softer flavors, you know, and as it ages, more cranberry flavors come out, it becomes softer, but it's soft right now, even for how, you know, it's kind of a contradiction, right? It's gripping, but it's soft, you know, so it's, it's special, and this is why it's the best wine of 2012. It's incredible. Mmm. Um,
yeah, I mean, it is so well made. This is what, you know, I love wine like this. This is what you call professional made wine. This is like, you know, the experts, right, make this stuff. Um, you wonder how many times they tasted it and got other people to taste it and maybe they had, had hired a consulting firm or something to come in and taste it and, you know, everyone tastes it until they get it perfect. And that's what this is. This is absolutely perfect stuff. Uh, it's got a beautiful, dry, structured, tight finish, but the flavors, I mean, they go on for days in your mouth. You don't even have to take them to sip. You can still taste the cedar and the blueberry in your mouth. It's incredible. You know, really nice um, vanilla notes as well. Mmm. Mmm. It's incredible. The acidity just kicks you, you know? It wants you to drink, your mouth wants more. So, wow, I just, I love this wine. And this is why uh, people need to try Cabernet Franc from the Niagara region. It'll blow you right away. Um, you won't believe it's Cabernet Franc. I mean, Cabernet Franc's got a bad rap uh, throughout the rest of the world because, you know, their, their um, location where they're growing it maybe is not ideal for Cabernet Franc. Here, our, our environment and our natural terroir here is perfectly, um, is perfectly situated uh, for Cabernet Franc. You know, the weather here, and it's amazing. You know, it, it, Cabernet Franc can survive in these cool type areas, but when it's hot, you get these big, luxurious flavors, you know, but it's not too hot. It's not like California where, you know, the acidity goes down and becomes jammy, goopy, flabby. This here has got perfect acidity, you know, perfect balance for a hot year. So, I mean, there you have it. Uh, this wine, I, I could obviously talk about it all day. I could sit here and drink it all day. Um, but I'm going to take this bottle and enjoy it with my friends and family. I hope you're doing the same. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I promise we're going to have some great content in the new year. Um, we're going to be going out to a lot of wineries uh, in the new year. And we're going to be doing long uh, videos out in the winery. So we'll do lots of exploring. Uh, the 2012 uh, Red Wine of the Year, Niagara Wine Videos Choice, Pond View, 2010, Bellaterra, Cabernet Franc. Cheers. shows you how nice uh, Pond View is and the inside where the, uh, the, the photo of the tasting bar that's Dan their uh, sommelier who uh, you gotta go see uh, he'll give you the same rundown of the premium wines that he gave me uh, he's incredibly knowledgeable uh, and he really uh, you know kind of lets you just taste for yourself with any kind of assumptions or anything like that so really nice experience there uh, just thought I'd give you an update here um, you know just letting the wine slowly develop in my glass as I sip it uh, through it and uh, it's also got a really nice charcoal note on the finish uh, that I missed in the initial tasting so I thought I'd just you know, point that out to you as well, uh, which I think gives it this really neat complexity. Uh, that charcoal finish you usually find in Bordeaux wines in, in the Medoc, so uh, I thought that was kind of unique uh, and special. Uh, maybe that's why I also liked it, you know, it's got these really neat flavors uh, that you usually don't find in Cabernet Franc solely. Uh, you usually find that, you know, in blends, Cab or Low blends um, with Cabernet Franc and maybe some Petit Bordeaux, like I said, Bordeaux blends. Um, you know, that charcoal finish. So uh, that's kind of nice that that's in here as well. Um, and I also want to point out that as I sip through this, I realize what a clean wine it is. You know, a lot of times Cabernet Franc can take on some of those barnyardy earthy tones and sometimes a green bell pepper. 
which turns some people off. I really enjoy the green pe bell pepper flavor. It's got a hint of it in there, but you really gotta look for it. So uh, for those who aren't familiar with it, you probably wouldn't notice it at all. So in my mind, that's, that's a nice uh, clean wine. So. Uh, you know, I just can't say enough about that. You obviously got to try it for yourself. I know they probably have lots in stock being uh, 2010. They just released it, I think, that week that I popped in there. So, uh, and that was just in the summer. So, uh, get down there, give it a try, and uh, ask to speak with Dan, and he'll give you the same um, wine experience that I got there. Cheers. Happy New Year, by the way. <laughs>